So, can we use this to climb on walls? And the answer is no. Why? Because electrostatic charge is a very hard thing and it's very sensitive to surface roughness. So even if your home glass window looks flat, in fact it's not, and an electrostatic charge won't work there because there's too much roughness. So what about if we combine the compliance of Kekko hair with the electrostatic chuck force. That's what I call Kekko inspired electrostatic chuck. So we want to achieve compliance. So the question now is what happens if we shrink a conventional electrostatic chuck? Well then at this point I call this maker of electrostatic chuck in Tokyo and they very politely reply me well you know uh, we don't sell electrostatic chuck to like this I mean this is custom made things and it costs lots of money so then I decide well I'll make my own homemade electrostatic chuck so I convinced some Japanese students in the lab to by using printed circuit board to make some homemade electrostatic chuck and they did a pretty good job and we even could measure forces. So with these results we plotted force versus scale for different electrostatic chucks. Here on the horizontal axis you have the scale of the chuck and the scale is defined by a parameter S which is the distance between two electrodes and on the Oh, vertical axis you have the force of the chuck. Now what we found is that we could replicate results already in the literature and that the smaller the chuck the less and less voltage you need to generate the same adhesion force. But this means that a low voltage microelectrostatic chuck must exist in this region. However, we are limited by the printed circuit board resolution. So in this case what you do, well, what do you do when you can we are stuck? You do simulations. So we did a simulation when we define some parameters. Here you see a substrate and here you see a four electrode electrostatic chuck. And very important when you do a simulation is to normalize dimensions. So we normalize everything by the scale factor S. When you do that, then your force just depends on normalized dimensions and a scale S. And here's a result of the simulation. And with these results, we found the following interesting conclusions. Now here on the horizontal axis you have again the scale of the chuck and here on the vertical left axis you have the what called clamp pressure of the chuck defined by here and on the right you have the electric field intensity. Now first thing we found out is it doesn't matter the scale of the chuck, the clamp pressure is proportional to the field intensity between electrodes. So conventional chucks operate at a scale of 2 millimeters and we could check that we got good results. And now the question is how much voltage do we need to achieve the same performance as a gecko? And the result is that if you make electrostatic chuck as small as a gecko foot hair, you need around 10 volts to achieve the same performance. But making such a small structure, as we have seen before, is very expensive. So why if we have a trade-off between voltage and scale? That's what I call the sweet spot around 20-30 micrometers diameter. And we know by the simulation that around we use 36 volts, we could achieve a similar performance as Gecko.
So this would be a soft electrostatic chuck versus a hard electrostatic chuck. Now, how to mass produce this? Well, and here I want to introduce another famous bio-inspired device. It's called Morphotex. As you know, butterflies color is the structure, depends on the structure, the shape of the surface of the flaps and the sparking blue using the butterfly, some butterflies, is due to interference. And with this idea, one guy in my university, which is next building, thought of making a structurally colored fiber, fiber using the same principle and he make a joint project with Nissan and Teijin and now Teijin is commercializing this structurally colored fiber and even my university is selling some straps based on this idea and they're using this special fiber. You can see here sparking blue. Now the, I talk about this because the technology they use to do this is fiber extrusion is a similar process by which you make optical fiber and it's a good way to mass produce things so we could build some kind of electrostatic hair by using the same concept very cheaply so I talked to this guy and I told him you have to help me to do this thing and he very kindly got these carbon nanotubes and he made this uh, micro hair so this this looks like human hair but it's uh, it's uh, micro hairs and uh, it's composed by a jacket, a, a shell of polymer and inside there's a polymer mix with carbon nanotubes arranged in the direction of the fiber. So the, the core is conductive and the jacket is insulating. And this is all I can show you, that's the state of the, state of the research right now. So I just can talk about future applications. So once we succeed in mass producing these static fibers, what can we do? Well, one thing is cheap climbing devices. And since we have fiber, we can make a cloth. And once you have cloth, you can make, for example, an on-off duster. You could also make a non-dust emitting cloth. And you could even make a high-performance mask. And this is the acknowledgement. I need to acknowledge Kenjiro Tadakuma, Dr. Masataka Urago, and simulations Hiroyuki Meguro and Toshi Hirochiai, Hirosawa for the manufacturing, and Takeshi Kikutani for the carbon nanotubes. And all this project was funded by the Venture Business Laboratory of my university. Thanks for your attention.